I work with PCBs all the time. Most of these PCBs have SMD components. And to solder those, I sometimes use my soldering iron and solder wire. But most of the time I use solder paste and my hot air gun. I usually apply the paste directly from the syringe and to push it out, I bought this metal handle. You fit this inside of the syringe and it will help you push the paste out, but sometimes you need to apply a lot of force or maybe it's just uncomfortable. That's why I've made my own electric paste dispenser tool that can select the amount of paste to push out and with just a push of a button, you can make small paste dots on the PCB. So this paste dispenser could help us when we need to solder a lot of small components. So let me show you how this works, what we need to make it and build it step by step. So guys, let's get started. Video sponsored by PCBWay. Look at those great gold finish pads. Their PCB quality is amazing and for so low prices. So if you want to get your own PCB design manufacturer, all you have to do is to download the Gerbil files from your designing platform such as Altium, KiCad and so on, then go to PCBWay.com, click the code now button and insert the board settings such as thickness, size and finish. Then upload the Gerbil files and apply the order. And for just $5 plus shipping, you will receive amazing PCBs with professional look and great finish. Select up to 14 layers, different color for the solder mask, different finish for the pads and more on PCBWay.com. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let me show you how this dispenser works, then we will take a look at the part list and finally assemble everything. With the top button we can change the rotating time. So in that way the amount of paste that will come out, with pulses from 50 milliseconds up to 600 milliseconds, or constant rotation where the motor is rotating without stopping while the button is pressed. If you long press the same button, it will go back to 50 milliseconds. The motor inside is connected to a screw that goes inside of the plastic piston. The piston has a threaded insertion in such a way that when the screw rotates, it will push and pull the piston and that will move the paste inside of the syringe. So just fit the syringe on the piston, rotate it 90 degrees so it gets locked in place, clip the button 3D printed part in place and then just push the buttons. Ok, so to make this project we need the 3D printed parts. I've made the design quite fast because I don't need it to be perfect or very good looking. All I want is to work. So inside these three parts I will put the electronics, the motor and the gears. These other two parts are just the piston and the support for the push buttons. Ok, so we need a small DC motor, but with a gearbox with enough torque to be able to push the piston and the paste. After I bought these motors, I've seen that there are some models that already have a screw on the main shaft, so we wouldn't need the extra gears and the printed case could be a lot smaller. So I've ordered some of these, but it will take a while to arrive. Anyway, in my case, I bought these kind of gear kits with all sets of sizes and shapes, so it's easier to select the size that you need and it costs just $1 or so. It's always great to have these around when you design stuff. I will use this one connected to the motor and this other one connected to the screw. And for the screw, I just cut a part of around 10 cm from a very long M3 threaded rod. We also need this kind of brass insertions with the same inner diameter of 3 mm. And also to close the case, we need 4 entry screws and on side of that, we need some small bearings. So that's all for the mechanical part. For the electronics, I will use an Arduino Pro Mini because it's small. And as for the H bridge, I want to use this module with the MX1508 driver. This driver is capable of controlling two motors, but I will only use one channel. We need to use an H bridge because the motor will rotate in both directions. As for the battery, I will use the typical 18650 and I've also ordered a socket like this one so we can place the battery and easily take it out for recharge. We also need some push buttons and some prototyping PCB, some wires and some small connectors to make all the connections. 
to show the time I will use a small OLED screen and that's it. This is all that we need for this project and the full part list is below in the description. So let's start assembling this project. First thing first, we sandpaper the 3D parts a little bit. I've printed this with two perimeters, 20% infill, a 0.4mm nozzle and 0.2mm layer height. And the material is pearl white PLA. I've also made sure that the holes are the correct size, with an entry drill. You also have to check if you can fit the solder paste syringe. The model is made in such a way that if you fit the syringe and rotate it, it will get locked in place. In that way it's quite easy to use. Ok, so the next step is to add insertion brass threads. So get some of these insertions and your soldering iron. So heat it up and push the insertion inside of the plastic. We need 4 insertions for the big 3D case. And then we need one more on the side that will be used to fix in place the battery socket on that side. Ok, so the next step is to add the bearings. We need 3. Each part will have one bearing. And now get the entry threaded rod and cut it to around 10 cm. If this is too long later, we could cut more, but first cut it to 10 cm. Now get the big diameter gear and place it on this screw. I measure more or less where the maximum length would be when it goes inside of the syringe. And then I add some entry nuts and fix in place the gear. Once we are sure that this is in the correct position, we could also add some glue to those nuts. Now get the DC motor with the small gear. I made a hole in that gear and fit it on the motor shaft with some glue. Get the middle 3D printed part and pass the screw with the big gear and then add the motor from below. You will see that it has its own socket. The small gear from the motor should touch exactly the big gear and like that we transfer the power. Ok, so at this point the mechanical part is ready. Now we need to make the electronics part. And for that I've used these connections that you could also find below in the description. The DC motor is connected to the H-bridge driver and this driver is connected to the 4 volts from the battery and the signal wires from the Pro Mini. Yes, I know that the Arduino is kind of overkill for this project, but I want to add more features in the future. And also we are using the OLED screen to print the rotating time. Ok, so I solder 3 push buttons to a prototyping PCB. Then I connect the Arduino to the driver, to the battery and so on. And using thin wires I connect the buttons to the Arduino and the OLED display as well. And before I fit everything inside, I give it a test. So download from below this code and upload it to the Arduino Pro Mini. And for that I'm using this external FTDA programmer with the USB connector. So connect it to the PC and then to the Pro Mini and click upload. Now I can add the battery. Now I check if I can control the rotating time with one button and then each time I push the first button the motor should rotate a little bit according to the time that it's set on the screen. And everything seems to work so it's time to place it all inside. I first add the long screw and the gear into the middle part. Then I pass the button's wires to the side hole of the big 3D printed part. But also the wires for the OLED screen and for the battery. And then I resolder everything inside of the case. I place the motor with the gear in its place and the driver and the Arduino on the sides. And everything seems to fit ok. Now we can close the case. So I sandwich all the parts together and using 4 entry screws and the insertions we have added before, we can close the case all together. Ok, so now the case is closed. I add another entry nut at the back end of the long screw just in case. And here we could also 3D print a knob and add it here and use that as a manual control. But actually, the DC motor has high gear ratio, so it can't be back driven so manual rotation would be impossible. Ok, so finally get the piston part and add another threaded insertion as before with the soldering iron. And now we can screw this on the long screw and when this will rotate it will push the piston downwards and get the paste out. As for the small buttons PCB, I've printed this ring clip and I've glued those buttons here. 
Then we could just clip this in place over the plastic syringe and push the buttons from here. I've also glued the OLED screen on the side. And yes, I know this doesn't look that good, so maybe I will change the case design in the future. I also want to make a full PCB design for such a project, so everything would look better. The battery socket was screwed in place on the side, with a small and flat tip M3 screw. The system is missing an on and off switch, and for now, taking the battery out and put it back in will be the on and off process. And that's it! So now get the solder paste syringe. Insert it over the plastic piston, then rotate it 90 degrees so it will get locked in place. Also clip the buttons over the syringe. Select the timing with the top button. One press will increase the value by 50 milliseconds, and maybe you could change this in the code. A long press will get the value back to the lowest value. Then you can press the first button and get out the paste for each pad. For example, here I'm pouring a small amount with 50 milliseconds. And then I've changed it to 200 milliseconds. You could also set the time to continuous rotation so the motor will never stop while pressing the button. And the code is made in such a way that when you press the button, it will push a small amount of paste for a short time. But then, till you don't release the button, the state won't change, and in that way we make sure that it won't pull more paste than the correct amount. So guys, that's how I've made my own solar paste dispenser, version 1, which is not that good looking but works ok. I hope that you like this project and maybe you have learned something new, and if so, please comment below or give me a like. Thanks again and see you later guys. So guys, this is the end of the video for this weekend. I hope that you like it and as always, the most important part, I hope that you have learned something new. And uh, I would like to thank you to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon because that for me is huge. And if you would like to support my projects, you have all my links below for Patreon, for my shop, for my Instagram and so on. So thanks again and see you later guys.